Any questions about what we have we had last time? Any questions on the topics before? Yes, sir. And no personal question. Not that I did this and my program gave me an error. Not that. Topic question. For the the IO iOS fix comment, how does it work as I can figure it out? Uh, it essentially what happens is that it um, it allows you to have, let's put it, it's, this is not a perfect explanation, but it's something to just, it allows you have, uh, it gives you a capability of uh, giving fixed amount of decimal points after the, after the double, let's put it that way. So when you do that, then you set precision, then you can actually set the precision of the thing to be two digits after the decimal point. Yes, let's put it that way. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but for now it's kind of a thing that for you to get and then we'll start up. Yes, sir. Uh, one of the example last time you gave us is for the square. So you give us like, um, you, when you create the, the, the object, you create box B equal 10. Today we talk about that. Okay. That's the default constructor. We'll talk about that today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about that today. Thank you. That's, a, that's, that's the, because we didn't teach that last stuff. Today is the lecture for that. Anything else? Anything? One? Two? So, also, I'm going to be pause this and I'm going to tell you one more thing. In minutes. All right, so. Um, for today's thing, I'm going to create a class. I call it a container. This class has no real purpose. It's just for teaching purposes that I'm creating it. So things that you see, I'm going to build on it. It's for you to learn. Some of the things that you see over there, most of the things that you see over there are absolutely unnecessary. But I'm just putting it to, to, for you to see what are the consequences of creating things that I talk about. Then what I'm going to do is... Uh, uh, create an actual class and apply those concepts on it and then we'll continue after that so the class container contains an integer that's all that's all I'm gonna do I'm gonna put an integer in it and we're gonna look at it and see what happens oh we can put a string uh, use string copy shall we no I'll go with integer the reason is that, that that's that's me always I always overcomplicate things. So I'm going to go with the simple one that is an integer. So we're going to create a class. As you see, everything is cr uh, created already. I have that, and I told you I'm not going to create the things in, in class anymore. So we're going to have a, a, a we're going to create a class. And it, it is a class. And uh, the name of the class is container. And the container of mine has only one integer data for all those people who are doing DIY and they don't put M underline at the beginning of their member variables, you're going to lose marks. Fix it. Okay? Not for the first one. As soon as you get my first replies and feedbacks on your workshops, remember that. Okay? So first time I'm going to tell you not to do it. The second time you do it, then you're going to lose mark on it. Be careful. All right? Um, and the marks that you're going to get, uh, because there are lots of common things, I'm going to create a document called feedback on GitHub. And I'm going to put code for it, A, B, A2, A3, A5. And I'm going to just forward slash and tell you line number 25, A5. You go to A5 and see what the comment is, so what's wrong with your code. Unless you have done something that is very unique, then I'm going to comment yours and put your comment in the public thing again. And then that, that's how comments add up. <clears throat> so that's going to be quick. So public. So we learned that we can actually create we learned that we can actually create uh, uh, methods, add methods to, uh, to a class. What methods do, essentially, what methods do are essentially, I never had to actually wipe out a projector before <laughs> screen, but apparently we have to do that now. OK, so, um, um, so we have learned that we can add methods to this thing. For example, when I create a container, what happens? So, in like if I actually co uh, come over here and I create a container, um, so in here I'm going to have int main. So, 
So I'll create a container, C. So that container C of mine will have a member variable called data in it, right? When I say data in it, it means M data. Remember that. So I'm not going to put M, say M underline. Whenever we are talking about a member variable, remember, automatically we have M underline. And this is not rule for C++. This is rule for my class. Get used to this thing. New supervisors, new teams, new companies, new coding regulation. You have to get used to it every single time. And if you're working for two different places, then you have com two completely different rules of, of coding, and you have to comply with all those. Get used to this, okay? So because we said we want to have something object-oriented, we want to have something that follows all the three rules that of object-oriented uh, object design that the first one is. The three polars, the three main topics of object orientation. First one is? Mm, what? I don't know. Three remember. things we have to follow to make something object oriented. Uh, I don't know. Polymorphism. Polymorphism is the first one. Encapsulation. Encapsulation is the next one. Pass. Pass. No, pass is not the other one. Abstraction. Abstraction, we'll talk about that. So we had polymorphism, we had encapsulation, and finally. I have pass. Inheritation. In Inheritance, perfect. Inheritance and shame on all those people who did not answer this. Because this is extremely important. If you don't know this, you're not here, for, you're here for nothing. This is object-oriented programming class. You need to always, you know what? Print those things, put it above your bed where you sleep. So every morning you wake up, you see object orientation that are polymorphism, encapsulation, inheritance. If you don't understand these things, go drop the subject right now. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to learn. Okay? What was encapsulation? Encapsulation was? Containing things? Containing things, which means? Uh, I don't know. Pass. Pass. I don't know. <laughs> Here goes your laptop. Grouping data and variable in a... Grouping data and behavior together or essentially putting data and behavior together. So that's encapsulation. Putting the data and behavior together, which we are doing. I put the data and I want to put the behavior with it. Add the behavior. What is the behavior? I want to be able to set that data to, to whatever I want. I want to be able to set that data to whatever I want with rules and regulations of my business logic. So people cannot go wildly set the data to whatever they want. Therefore, I'm going to create a function for it, and I'm call that function set. So void set int data. OK? So I'm setting the data to something, and that's my function over there. That's my member function, or what we call member function. We call it the method. That's my method. I'm going to add my method over here. I don't want to have it at the same place. A module that I create always have two parts, as we recall. One is CPP, and the other one is header file, and I don't need, need this one for now. So <clears throat> this is going to be set data, and it's going to be over here, uh, 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 container. Container. OK? Container and the container of my, mine is setting the data. For example, say I want my data to be between a thousand and a minus one thousand. That's the range of my data, and I don't want it to be less or more than that. Or I want it to be positive. I want it to be zero or a thousand, not more, not less. Okay. So what do I do? So that's that's my business logic for this. Someone else may must may just want to have negative numbers or whatever. My business logic says. I want it to be between 0 and 1,000. So what do I do? In here, I'm going to say if uh, data is greater than or equal to 0 and my data that I'm getting is less than or equal to 1,000, I'm good to go, right? I am good to go, correct? So now I can actually set M data to the data. And if it's not that, then what do I do? Set it to what? Like, 
If it's not good, what do I do? What do I look for? Seriously? <clears throat> okay, so this is, you guys be happy. I cannot come over there. All right, so what do I do? What do I need to do? When the data is not valid, when I'm set setting, what do I do? What do I need to do? Error message. Uh, error message. See, beautiful thing. So you know there is error that I have to take care of, but how to take care of it, that was wrong. One of the rookie things that we do as, C as programmers is that something goes wrong, I'm printing an error message. Your job is to build the engine. Nobody asks you to give an error. Error printing is for people who are designing user interfaces. User interface is the part of the program that, program that programmer, the end user, is dealing with. I am writing my guts of the thing. It's like the engine. If something goes wrong in the engine, I don't light up something in the engine. I have to do something so the console of the car can show me the error message. OK? So what do I do? Safe, empty state. OK? So my business logic says it should be greater than 0 and less than 1,000, that I had made a mistake. So what is a good safe empty state flag for this? Make it something negative, right? So in here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, if that's the case, m data is set to minus 1. Is that good? No, it's not. You never, ever write hidden logic in your code. If you are setting it to a safe empty state, call it that. You, like, as soon as you do that, as soon as you write that, it means you opened your program for bu two bugs. Tomorrow, you're going to say, what the heck was that? Why did I set it to minus one? I don't know. Immediately, even if you don't have the function, just build something set to safe empty state. I know, stupid name, but hey, empty, empty, come on, you can type it, empty state, OK? And as soon as I do that, I'm going to say, OK, I don't have the function. The heck with it. I'll write it in two seconds. So now I'm going to come over here. Anybody else is going to use the, anybody else is going to set my object to a safe, empty state than my object itself? No. Nobody's supposed to set my class to be invalid. It's my decision. Therefore, I put that one even in a, in a uh, uh, private section so nobody can see it. I decide when it is safe or when it's not. So now I'm going to say m data is set to minus 1. I know it's only one line of code that, that makes it safe. safe. OK, so set to safe empty state. Big name, descriptive. Three years from now, I open this program. I know what my else is doing. I know C programmers hate long names. Those people who like to have maintained their names, they love it. Is that a question? Yes, sir. Like we wrote the definition of the function inside the header file. Can we do that? Yeah, I have to do that. Uh, I haven't done it yet. Uh, I, it, I just wrote the exam. I'm going to take it and put it in its place. Oh, sorry. My apologies. I just wrote the function in there. I'm not going to, I'm not going to leave it in there. That's, that's uh, something bad that I did. So um, I'm going to do copy. I got too excited and did something wrong. OK, so that's that. That's better. Thank you very much. OK, are we good now? OK, so we set it. Now we want to show it so we can actually show it. Now I can actually, if I want to display what container is doing. So I'm going to say over here, void, display. And you know I like to have OStream returned over here. Why? because uh, it makes it easier to, to print stuff immediately after displaying. So I'm going to have display over here, and display is constant because it's not going to change my container. All right. I need to type on this keyboard more. OK, so copy this and put it over here. And in here, I'm going to say uh, container again. All right. So I have my display over here. O stream is not known. I need to include it. 
I had it over here, right? So I'm just going to copy it because I'm lazy. Actually, let's not be lazy. So include IO stream, and I'm going to use namespace. See, this is what I hate about this. Get out of my face. There you go. Space, name, space, STD. OK, so that takes care of this O stream over here. And we're going to come to the header file. I have an O stream over there, so I have to add that too. So I'm going to say include IO stream and using namespace STD. Right? Are we OK? Are we OK? Yes. Uh, the library from the header file. So should you just remove uh, the one in the in the CPP file? Yeah. No, that's the that's the whole idea of having safeguards in the header file. So you do it without caring. Okay. I had a huge mistake. I wanted to shout shout again and I say no, it's wrong. But nobody even objected to that. No, too late. Okay. Yeah. You in your it, like it, anyways. But anyways. You never ever use a header file, uh, 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 a namespace in a header file. I mentioned that 55,000 times in class, and I'm telling you again. You never do using in a header file because that makes programmers who are using your container to use namespace STD without knowing. When they include it, they're going to start using namespace STD. Lots of classes will go under the shadow of STD, and we don't want that. Because of that, you never do using keyword in a header file. Instead, you individually qualify the objects that are in that namespace. So you say STD scope resolution. Are we OK with this? And now with this space. So essentially, I did a quick review of what we have done last time, right? Now in here, I have to say, OK, I'm going to display this thing. When I display, I have to check to see if it's actually a valid object or not. So I have to check to see if it's empty or not, correct? So what I need to do over here, say if is empty, if in empty state, If it is in empty state, then I'm going to say uh, uh, C out um, invalid object, invalid container object. OK, if you want to act surprised, that's what you do. OK, otherwise, uh, then I'm going to print it. So I'm going to simply say C out M data. OK? And then at the end, to be able to give everybody else access to C out, I'm going to return C out. So essentially, my display will impersonate C out after its execution. Any place I call display, that display essentially becomes C out, and I can continue my work with C out with that. So, uh, and I, again, I made up a function. I better make it immediately. So I'm going to have that function over here. And that one, I think it should be public so other people can see if it's valid or not. So I'm going to put it out here. So I'm going to have a Boolean that tells me if it's in a safe empty state or not. And I'm going to have Boolean container return mdata being less than 1, 0, sorry. So I think we're all good, except this one is not giving up. Did I do something wrong? Is in safe empty state? No. OK, it was just, huh? Oh, we'll find out. I don't think there's anything wrong. Anything wrong with it? Anybody can see I missed something? Oh. Yes, I missed something. Can anybody tell me what mistake I made? Uh, 
Five percent for the first test. What happened? Yeah. Why I'm getting an error over there, and I'm not going to go over it to tell you what's going on. Let me see if he got five percent. You have to use the class name. Oh, the no. My lady over there. <coughs> you didn't give uh, any conditions to the if statement. You just because printed. The condition is the function. Function is returning a boolean, so it is a but condition. Any there's nothing to it. There it's is like something to it. So it returns either true or false, and that's all if. So that's actually pretty cool, but not wrong. Nice try, though. It was good. You have a specified constant? Thank you. We got 5%. I am in a constant function, correct? And I'm calling a function that is not constant. Are you okay? Did we get that? I am in a function that I am forced to I am in a function that I am forced to not change my owner by mistake. Then I create it and is in empty state, which its job is not to change, but I forgot to make it a constant. Then I'm calling it in here. It has no idea what I did in this class in that function. It doesn't know that I'm not actually changing it. So it's telling me, hey, you are in a constant area. Calling a function that is not constant, I'm not going to let you do that. So by mistake, you change the state of your, of your container. So now I'm going to fix that. So this has to be const, and this has to be const. And those people who get these 5% cannot get any 5% more unless someone else gets it. So remember that. Don't waste answering if I give 5% for anything. So if I give, so, uh, so that, that gentleman over there got it, so it's open for another person. He cannot do it twice, so, back to back. So you can only call constant functions within another constant function. Exactly. That's the whole idea. Otherwise, you could create a constant function, then in, in a constant function, call a non-constant and change the object. Only constants with constants together. You cannot do it one by one. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Now we can actually run the test program over here and say container C, the very first thing that I'm going to do over here is say C.display. Okay? And then after that, I'm going to say a new line. And I'm going to say C dot set to 50. Then I'm going to say C dot display again. and go to new line. So when I run this program, obviously, what I'm going to get it's invalid container of ob, ob, object. OK? All right, so let's fix that thing first. So invalid is invalid. And it's not object, it's object. So anyways, so uh, I fixed it all right. Uh, invalid. OK, there you go. All right. So again, I was lucky that when actually C over here was called to display, it actually displayed the gar tries, tries to display the garbage inside data. And unusually, unset, uninitialized variables inside a, a class hold a negative value. So when I just come over here, as you see, when I look at C, you see the data is a huge negative number. The reason behind it is that we don't care. Just know that usually it's big negative. But it could have been positive. If it was positive, then I, had, I was in trouble, right? Because uh, although I set my class over, my sim I set my logic over there to set it uh, uh, to minus one, but what if by mistake in memory I had 5,000? It would have accepted it because it's not negative, right? And it would display 5,000, but my business logic says 1,000. So I have problem in here. Okay? The problem is that 
The problem is that when I create an object, the values inside the object are random. And I, that's not a good thing. I need to be able to set the values inside the class at the moment of creation. How do I do that? I do that with a routine that I can add to a subroutine, I call it, not a function. A routine that I can add to a, uh, to a class. So essentially, I can tell to the, I can tell to the, uh, uh, to the, to the C language that when my class is created, I want the data to be such and such. Okay? This is done inside an entity, a routine that I call it a constructor. We call it a constructor. Constructor's job is to dictate what to do at the moment of creation. So if we have a timeline that you put when you're actually writing your code, okay, it is important to understand that when an object is getting created over here at line 7 and the constructor being called after, there is no possibility to do anything because that's the first thing that happens. Okay? So, when I actually, if I want to write a constructor, how do I do it? Constructors look like functions, but they are not. 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 What does it mean? It means they are just package of instructions that will automatically be called at the moment of creation. It is impossible for you to, to manually invoke and call a constructor. You can't do that. It's impossible. Okay? So, it looks like you can, but it does something completely different that we're going to find out today. So how do I create a constructor? Constructors carry to identify a constructor from a function. Constructors are always carry the name of the class to make sure you understand this is not a function. And they don't have a return type. They don't return anything because they are not a function. So <clears throat> if I want to create a constructor, I'll go container over here. And I'm going to write what I want to pass. This is called the no argument constructor. A no argument constructor is a constructor that is invoked automatically when you create an object without passing anything to it, just by itself. So if I create this, I can actually create the constructor over here. So again, it's a constructor. I do not need a return type. So container, it belongs to the container. The name is container, and it doesn't receive anything. A no argument constructor, or we call it, default constructor, okay? <clears throat> default constructors, I actually, empty default constructors are built for every single class that you create. Empty default constructors that have nothing in them. Because if you don't have a constructor, a class cannot get created. So a default constructor is created automatically for you by the system if you haven't defined it. And it doesn't do anything. It's just an empty one. Okay, so by doing this, you're essentially telling to the system, hey, I'm taking over the default constructor. You don't do it. As a matter of fact, any constructor you create gives the, comp gives the compiler that message. So any type of constructor you create, it means the system is not going to create a default constructor for you anymore. So what do I want to do when an object is created without saying anything? I want it to be in a safe, empty state. So I simply say, if nothing is passed to this thing, set it to a safe, empty state. OK? And I'm going to add one more thing. What do I add? I'm going to add this. This is not in our uh, outline, in our curriculum, or anything like that. OK? But I'm doing it so. It's useful for you for debugging. So I want to be able to print messages if I want to for debugging. 
So what do I do? I'm going to use the same feature that I actually used for safeguards. So in here, I'm going to say define. Obviously, after include, I'm going to say uh, define SDDS debug. So I'm saying, I want to do debugging. I'm going to create that thing. OK? Now, in here, what I'm going to do, any place I want to show a message for debugging, I'm going to write an if statement exactly as I've done with that one. But instead of if not defined, I'm going to say if defined. So I'm going to say if defined. You see, it actually tells debug automatically, but that's, that's not what I want to do. SDDS debug. Now, I'm going to say over here, I'm going to put my print messages. So essentially, if I turn on debugging, it's going to show the message. If I turn the debugging off, it's not going to show the message. So I can actually run my program with debugging and without debugging easily. So what I'm going to do in here is this. So I'm going to actually put it after the, the thing in here. And I'm going to say, see out. Uh, Oh, SDS debug and two underlines. My apologies. All right. And in here, I'm going to say uh, uh, defaulted a container. OK? So I simply print a message that I defaulted a container. That's all. All right? Very simple and straightforward. All right? And the debugging is on, and it's defaulting it. So now I'm gonna. Now that I have created this thing, that uh, constructor, if I run this beautiful program of mine three years later, what it's called, at the very beginning of the program, you will see this default of the container. Now invalid container object because I'm just printing a a container without anything. Right? And then I'm setting it to 50, and I'm displaying it again. So that 50 is coming over there. Right? Or if I want to actually see the sequence of stuff happening, I can actually add a debug statement to my setting saying, setting container. and then show the value data go to new line so that's the debugging statement for that and for safe empty state I can simply say put that one in here where's my safe empty state safe empty state there we go to a safe empty state And remove all the data schmata we don't need. Delete, 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 and go to new line. So now if I actually run this program, let me just bring it over here so we can actually see. And also uh, a question. Can you guys see this back there? Or it's too small? Oh, yeah, too small. Definitely too small. <laughs> can you see this? Anybody over here have difficulty seeing this? Be brave, say yes. OK, good. OK, this is good. Can you see this? OK, so we are back to the original thing that we were, so forget it. Anyways, so, so it was good at the beginning. Now, if I actually run this program, now it, was, it, ran, it only set defaulting a container. Now it actually is going to tell me everything that happens inside that thing. So I'm going to do it like that. So it's going to actually put all the states and put it out. OK, setting container to a safe, empty state. That's when the default constructor is called. Then default to the container. Now invalid container object. Now setting container to 50, and the 50 is printed. Yes? What's the difference between this and CLs? The, this is the difference. I comment this, and all the debuggings are gone now. Now my program runs, actually, the way it's supposed to be. So I can turn the up debugging on and off 
to debug my program without all the hassle of things that I have. So it's a beautiful thing. You just comment that one, debugging is not happening, it runs the program the way it's supposed to be. Something goes wrong, you activate the debug, all the messages are going to start showing and then you'll see how things happen. Okay? All right. Again, these are talking to the compiler. Don't think that you added a C program to this thing or a C routine to this. It's sim you are simply telling the compiler, completely disregard the lines that are in SDDS debug if I turn that comment off. So line 24, for example, will not even get compiled. Not that it won't run. It's not a runtime thing. Your program will not have this code in its binary if that thing is off. When you turn that on, everything is as if somebody added the code. Now it will get compiled. Your code's going to be bigger and debugging is going to come through. So turning that debugging off will literally remove those C code from your code before compilation. Very important thing. Okay? And usually, if I do something like this, seriously, I put this defined statement in a header file called debug. Okay? So I know where, because usually you cannot find that thing after seven years. Where did they put that defined thing before debug so I can turn it on? Okay? But if you put that one in a header file called debug h, whatever, um, debug.h, then you include it wherever you need debugging. And then you turn it on and off. <clears throat> okay? And if it's not included, the fine it's not going to be there, you're not in debugging mode. Okay? I'm not going to do that now, later. Are we okay down to here? Okay, so that's the constructor that I actually default my object with. But you can do something else too. You can actually tell to the compiler, I want, the compi the comp I want my object getting created and the values be set to such and such. Of course, you can do that in, a, in, the, in, the, in the default constructor too. So if your default object is to be not an invalid object. But for example, if I have a container, actually, that's what I'm going to do. When you have a container, the container is not invalid. There's no hole in it. The container is just empty, correct? Correct? So I'll fix it. That's not a good design. I'm not going to set it to a safe, empty state. I'm going to say, If it's invalid, oh no, that's, what am I doing? I'm going to say, set m data to zero. Now, if I'm writing it, I'm not going to put that one over there. I'm going to actually create a function called set empty and call it so it sets my object to empty. So I know why I set that one to zero. That's what all these little methods do. That's what object orientation is. You name every action that you do, so later on you know what actions are available. Then you're going to see you have a set to a safe empty state, and you have a set to an empty state. One is safe, the other is just empty. Empty the container, or I'm just going to call it empty as a verb. Something that empty, empty it. Okay? Are we okay with this? All right, but I'm not going to do that now because it's, again, too many bells and whistles I don't want to add. So now if I run the program, it's going to be different. I'm going to turn the debugging on, and you'll see that I do not have an invalid container at the beginning anymore. When it actually runs, when it's defaulting a container, the container has a zero value in it. It's not invalid anymore. Now I set that thing to 50, and now my container has 50. All right? Are we okay with this? So that's what default constructors do. Whatever your business logic says, if an object is getting created with no strings attached, what do I do? Okay? And remember, remember this, very important. If you're creating any constructor, default constructor is your responsibility. The C++ compiler will not add one for you. Now, the next thing I need to do over here is to actually set this to whatever I want. So if I want the container to set the thing to whatever value, then I can do it. I can actually say, um, <clears throat> can 
Can I add one more property to my container? I want to add one more property to my container to make it actually make sense, OK? So let's say container has a maximum value that I put over there for, as 1,000. Remember that? OK, so I want to actually see what is the size of a container. Maybe the container has different sizes. Like I get a container that has only 100 units can be fit in it. Another container can be 1,000. So let's put a maximum value for our container to see how big of a container we can have. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to call it int. Uh, what can you call? Volume is OK? Volume of the container? Or max volume? Or capacity? Capacity. 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 So m. Capacity, and I'm going to add that one. Now I'm going to add the features to all the things that it's supposed to go. So uh, the M capacity thingy that I have. So in a default constructor, so let's say if I'm default, defaulting a container, uh, what is the capacity of a container is 100. OK? And uh, when you are setting the container, you have to make sure that the data is less than capacity, right? Not from just whatever. Correct? That's the correct thing to do. So when you are actually setting the thing, you're setting the 100. And I say, if you're setting my thing, it should not be more than the capacity of the container. It only holds 100. So don't put anything more than 100. So again, my business logic is flowing nicely. Now, in a safe, empty state, do I need to change anything? Safe, empty state is to notify me if something is safe or not. Setting the data to minus 1 is enough. Why do I need to set anything else? And that's the flag I'm looking for, right? And any time I want to see if it's in a safe, safe empty state, I check the minus one thingy, right? So I don't need to do anything. Don't do extra stuff if you don't need it. Don't, and, and that becomes unnecessary logic. I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to set that capacity to 0, 02. Why? You don't need to, right? So that's that. Uh, so uh, my set, yeah, my set so sets the, the thing. And uh, we can have a second argument added to our set. So if they want to, they can set the capacity. And if they don't want to, it's the default value that we have. So in here, I'm going to say int capacity. And I'm going to default that to a 100. And to make sure this 100s don't go different, I'm going to come in my uh, uh, header file, and I'm going to say define, or even better, const integer max capacity is set to a 100. And that's what I'm going to do. So in here, I'm going to set it to max capacity. And in here, I'm going to set it to max capacity. If nothing is provided. Please stop me if you see I'm going gobbledygook or something is here uh, uh, unnecessary. First of all, I made a mistake. Let me fix it. I made a horrible mistake. Horrible, horrible mistake. Horrible mistake. What is my mistake? I put a default value for my argument inside CPP file. That's wrong. This has to come into the header file. Your default values are always in a header file. So I put it in there. I'm going to remove it from here. And I'm going to put it right in here. And everything's going to go fine. All right, so it's got to be set to max capacity if it's not provided, and everything else looks to be OK. So, uh, and, oh, I have to set the capacity over here, too. So m capacity, m capacity is set to capacity. All right, and in here, I can actually show something like data. So that's the setting container to this inside. So um, how do I put something? Uh, I'm going to say, I'll put a slash. Later on, we'll find out what is a good notation for it. So in here, I'm go it's got to be capacity. Capacity. There you go. 
So setting the container to this and that. If I run this program, it's going to work exactly the same. The difference is that now I have a capacity. So when I, when I see th things being set, oh, I didn't set the display yet. So in here, it is actually telling that setting container to 5 out of 100, 50 out uh, of 100. But in the display, uh, I need to display it properly. So um, data, and this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to add the slash thingy over here. M capacity. Oh, and I'm not going to go to new line. And we're done. So control F5. Why don't I want to display? I, I don't like, so, so th this is what happened. So 0, 100, and 50 out of 100. So we know what's going on. Now, uh, why don't I like to put backslash n in my display? Can anybody guess? This is not no, for no 5%. You're not supposed to guess, but it's just. You know why I don't want to do that? Sometimes you want to display a container within certain message. If you have a new line, then you're doomed to always go to new line. That's why I rather have all my displays returning O string to give me the option to go to new line if needed. If not, I can insert the capacity halfway through a report if I want to. Okay? So that's why it's better not to have displays, uh, backslash ends in displays, so you can actually fit it anywhere you want. Anyways, next thing I want to do is to set this thing to a predefined, uh, to, a def to a specific value as I'm creating it. For that, again, you create a constructor, which is very fine. Again, I'm going to do that. So you create a constructor. But in that constructor, you mention what you want it to be. So container, and you have pass a value to it. So or I'm going to say over here data. Um, control H. I'm changing all the M data. I don't like the name. Now I'm, I have capacity, I need to have value. So value is this much, capacity is this much. So I'm going to control H changes everything. No, I'm going to say all the M data, change it to M value. OK? In this project, and I'm going to say change everything. And I'm going to say yes. So all the M data are now changed to value. I think that's a better thing to say. So M value is set to the data that is coming in. All right? So again, we are going to come over here, and I'm going to call this one value. So the value that I, it, that I want to put in, the, in a container, the definition creating it is exactly the same thing. So you create a, 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 a constructor, and you pass the integer to it. So I have integer value that is being passed into it. And I'm going to set the value to the value that is coming in. OK? And I want you to tell me. So I'm going to say uh, uh, creating a container with creating a container with now I'm going to remove this and I'm going to call the display. OK, so create a container with this value in it, with this whatever value. So that's my message. But what did I do wrong in here? Can anybody tell me? I didn't validate. I didn't validate the value. If somebody puts a container 5,000, it's going to happen. Reuse your code. I have a set function that sets this thing properly. Reuse it instead of actually calling the and setting the value to hard code, hard, hard code values, call the set function and let it do it for you. So say value in here. Done. And because my logic follows things properly, sets the capacity to 100 when it's in there, I don't need to think about anything else. So if somebody wants to create a container with a specific amount of thing in it, then they can do it now. OK, so now if I want to actually create a container, that has 20 things in it already at the moment of creation, I can simply say, so I'm going to create a second one, container B, and I'm going to set that one to 25. So 
now my container is receiving one value, and that one value is 25. Therefore, the constructor who receives one value will be called. Now, if I run the program, and I'm going to do it step by step. Actually, let me display it too. Wait, 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 wait. Stop, 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 stop. Stop. Let me display two. So I'm going to display B. So I'm going to say over here, that's that one. So in here, I'm going to go C out. This is A. And C out. This is B. Now I can say B dot display. Now let's run it. I'm going to go step by step. So the program is running. It comes to the default constructor because nothing is provided. It goes to the default constructor and sets the value to zero. Again, I made a mistake over here. I should have called set. I did not. Bad boy I am. I should have set it to zero. What again? All right. And then capacity. All right. Then I say defaulted the, the container. OK. Now it comes out. Now it wants to create B with one value being set. Therefore, it calls the container with one value. And when I run it, it comes over here, and the value will be 25, the value that is passed over here. Now it's going to set the object to that value. So, and we know that it's setting, setting the container to a safe empty state. What did I do wrong in here? What did I do wrong? Oh. OK, let me run it one more time. Creating a container set. Oh, I, my message is wrong. Bad boy you are. Setting a container with, no, actually, that's right, too. To a safe, empty state. What the devil happened? OK, I'll find out what it is. So setting a I don't know what is that. We'll go through it. We'll find out. See, that's actually good. We know actually something is happening over there. That's what the debugging is for. Uh, creating comp uh, uh, the container with embedded container object. Holy schmoly. OK, I'll give you five minutes break. Go let me fix this. I don't want to do it. In if you, you can watch me do it, but uh, uh, let me just see what the devil happened. Let me just see what did I do. OK. So container value, set the value, set comes over here. Capacity is that one. Let me just walk through it and see what happens. So it comes over here. This is fine, defaulting a container incorrectly spelled. It goes over here. Go in here. Set. Data is 25. Capacity is 100. If data is greater than 25, Oh. I know what the mistake is. I'm supposed to check it with the capacity that is coming in, not get the capacity. That set is wrong. That set is wrong. I have to remove it.
Hello. It's in the page in here. I mentioned. But it is. It, uh, you have to. You have to find the time. That I like. I am. Um, let me. See. I'm gonna open more time so you can do it two weeks in advance. So probably it's overbooked. That's why. Probably that's the reason. Um, but it's the booking. Did you go in here? That's that. When you say how to, how do I? Did you actually go to the page and clicked on it? So you went over here. You booked an appointment, and it wasn't anything available, right? All right. <laughs> May I say? Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Now listen. This is actually this is actually good. Remember, I like when I created, I say, I'm just going to add a capacity to it. OK? Should I do that? Everybody says, sure, let's do it. OK? I added, with just adding one more feature to my class, I added a degree of complexity that screwed everything up. Let me just, uh, I ch made some changes. I'm going to kind of control Z it. Let me just stop it and go back to what it was. Then I'm going to control Y it back. So. This is what we had. This is what I created, and we had problem with it. I said, I'm just going to add one more and set the capacity accordingly, right? But if you are setting the capacity, if I am setting the capacity, then I cannot default the value to anything, to 100. Because then if they want to just set the value to something, capacity is going to be overwritten by 100. So that could work. That set thingy could work if it wasn't no capacity. But this is one of the examples that default arguments don't work. You have to actually overwrite the set and have two functions, which I did. So the reason was that I was, I was checking the data with m capacity, and I was setting it with something else. Because of that, the second one would go false. m capacity was not set. And because it wasn't set, it would give an error, and it would go to a safe, empty state. 
which rightfully did. So when I was initializing the object with one thing, it came to set, set the data to 25, but it had nothing for M capacity because we didn't set it. It was garbage. And that garbage value triggered that. So that was because it was, that was the reason it was going wrong. So what I did was this. I said, let's have two sets. One set only sets with one data, and the other one, give me a second. OK, so I have one set that only accepts one. It doesn't do anything to capacity, and it checks and makes sure that the capacity is set properly. OK? It's not more than what you have. So if you say set my object to 25, it's going to do that for you. That's number one. Number two would be the one that accepts two arguments. It won't check it with M capacity anymore. It will check it with the capacity you actually give to it. So it's not going to cause an error, because now I have two different functions for set. One with one, the other one with two, with no default argument set. Now I can go to my uh, set for the constructor, and I say, when they don't specify, put maximum capacity in here. So now my constructor with one value will set the value to what you have, and the rest to, uh, and the capacity to the default value that I want. Now if I walk through it, I'm going to have a proper thing. Now, uh, to have more space, I'm just going to uh, bring this one over here, make it one, and walk through it. So now the default constructor is called. It comes up over here, sets the value. I forgot to do that. Let me just do it right now. So for this one, I'm going to say, Set to zero. An empty container, right? Now I have two different sets. Hopefully it's going to recompile it and recompile it properly. So it's going to recompile, applying changes. So it comes in here, sets that one to zero, and capacity. Which one did it come to? Uh, no, sorry. Let me go back in here, 0 and 100. It's the moment of creation. One more time. Let's go through it. All right. So the default constructor comes up, calls the set for 0 and 100. It goes to 0 and 100, sets the capacity properly. So data is 0, so, so it is within the thing. It sets it, and everything's good. Gets out, life is beautiful, setting the container to 100. And it says it defaulted the container, which is fine. Then it comes for B. I have one argument passed to it, so it calls the constructor that has one argument, passes that value with maximum capacity to the container. Therefore, the container will have 100 and the value set properly, setting container to 25 by 100, of 100. Then it comes back, and it says creating a container with value of whatever. OK, so it shows the value. So it shows what was set and what it was created, and everything looks good. Now it's going to say, this is A. A is defaulted, that it's 0 out of 100. Set it to 50. Now it's set to 5200, and container is set. And for B, I have 25 out of 100, and everything's good. So now I created a constructor that receives one argument. Now, I can actually, so let me set the debugging to, to off, and turn it on only if I want to actually walk through it and see things uh, are not going right. So if I actually run it, This is what I have, simple and straightforward. 
Container C is defaulted, therefore it has zero. Container B is set to 25, therefore it has 25 out of 100. If I show the C value, it's going to be zero out of 100. If I set it to 50 and show it, it's 50 out of 100. Then for B, because it was set to 25, it's going to have 25 out of 100, and life is beautiful. Okay? Now, that's the first thing we have done. But this is what I wanted to. The reason that I actually put the single argument constructor in that way was to send you the loud and clear message that when you have assignment at the moment of creation, when you're writing integer i is set to 5, when you say double b is set to 2.3.5, okay? If you, if you actually write something like this, these are not assignment operators. These are actually constructors receiving a value, as you see. I have an assignment over there. And remember, write this down, add it to that three thingies, polymorphism thingy that you had on the ceiling, and it's a very important thing. Assignment at the moment of creation is a call to the constructor. Assignment at the moment of a creation is a call to the constructor. It's not assignment. If you write integer i, and then the next line you write i is set to 5, that's a completely different story. We're going to run it, and you'll see. But there are two different notations. You can call it like this, or you can say container b25. It is exactly the same, absolutely no difference. And just to show you what I mean by this, let's say I want to show this display five times. You write a for loop and you write int i set to 0, i less than 5, and i plus plus. So I want to show this display thingy five times, right? That's what I want to do. That's how you have written initializations, correct? You can actually do this. It is exactly the same, no difference. Assignment at the moment of creation is a call to a constructor. So even when you are creating an integer, you can put the zero in parentheses in front of it. Because assignment at the moment of creation is a call to the constructor. It's not an assignment. So if I run this program now, what is build errors? Don't tell me actually. Redefinition of B. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I have to comment that. Sorry, I have to comment that. Control F5. All right. And this is what happens. Exactly what we have done. No difference. It is identical. Okay? Next thing I have to mention to you, another consequence of what we created. So in here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rename this. I'm going to put 0, 1, const.cpp. That's the constructor. Or container, container main.cpp. All right, so let's open this up and this time see what I'm going to do. Now, I want your attention on this one. This is a tough one. I want your attention. I'm going to remove that C thingy from uh, B completely. I'm going to remove B. Okay, all right. Now, this is what I'm going to do. Okay? Right? Or that it was 25, I'll put 25 just to put your mind in ease. It's the same thing, okay? Now I'm going to say C dot display. And run it and see what happens. Twenty-five out of hundred. What do you know? What the heck just happened? I set a container class to an integer. How the devil that thing happened? Now this is what happens. You have done that with doubles, right? You wanted to remove the partial part of a double. You put a double in an integer, right? You write integer i. Then i is set to 
2.5 and 2 goes in I, right? How did that happen? Temporary casting, right? So what happens, the compiler takes a look at left side and sees, oh, there's a container. What is that right side? An integer. I have an assignment operator halfway through. Let me see if I make a container out of that 25. What does it do? It looks in the constructors of container. Is there a container that accepts an integer? If there is, at line 7, it's at line 8, it's going to create a temporary nameless container out of that 25. Now you have C at left and the nameless container at right, two same objects. It copies everything from that one into this one, then it kills that one and it's gone. So if I turn on debugging now, the story is going to be a little bit different. And run the program, the messages that are going to appear show this. First it says setting the container to 0, 100, defaulted the container. That's line number 7, correct? Then it comes to line 8, it says setting the container to 25 by 100, creating a container with this value in it. What the heck that thing comes? Well, that's the nameless that is getting created. So you created an object without knowing. That's the difference between assignment at the moment of creation and assignment later after the object is created. And if you didn't have a constructor that accepts an integer, it would have given you an error. It wouldn't have worked. Okay? Are we okay with this? Now, to show you better in contrast what happens, I'll show you another thing that we can do. We can actually create constructors which are actually routines that run at the beginning of the birth of the object. Right when the object is getting created, I want the compiler to do something. I know that's a constructor, right? We can create a destructor. What is a destructor? Destructor is things you want to do right before the object dies. Okay? Clean things up. This is very useful for dynamic memory allocation. Okay? Constructor can build your memory. Destructor can delete your memory so you don't have garbage and memory leak. Okay? So it means you don't need to worry about it. When it's gone, it's going to happen. I'm going to add it to the container and see what happens. So I don't have anything to do. The container is, a destructor is not needed for a regular object that contains its own data. I have the two integers inside container. When container is dead, the integer is going to be gone because they're inside container. Anything, if I throw away this beautiful, sorry, thing with lots of liquid in it, the liquid's going to go to garbage too. Correct? Because it's inside of it. So I don't need a destructor for this. But if I have something that the data is outside in dynamic memory allocation data, that's what it is. You keep the pointer, the information is out, right? If that's the case, then you need a destructor. So I want to create a destructor for it just for heck of it. How do you create a destructor? Destructor carries the same signature as the default constructor. The difference is that it has a tilde in front of it. That means when object is, sorry, not when, right before the object is dying, call that. Okay? Let's do it. Let's do it and see what happens. So I'm going to actually create the destructor over here. So I'm going to put it right beside the constructor. Container. And I'm going to create the destructor. Now, this destruct destructor, I don't need anything to be done. I'm just going to put a debugging message to see when is it dying. So when something is dying, I can see. All right? So what happens over here, I'm just going to add the, the debugging statement. I'm going to say, container with this value is dying. That's all. Vontainer is a German version of container. Vontainer. Okay. So now Vontainer. Okay. Container. Okay. 
All right, so that's what I did. So the, my destructor is just showing a message something is dying, right? So let's do it. Let's run it and see what happens. Now if I'm right, I should have an object getting destroyed between this line and that line, right? So what I, if, I'm saying, if what I'm saying is right, before line 8 and line 9, I should have a nameless object dying, right? Let's try and see if it's that correct or not. And have these things in all your objects, this, this debugging thingy with a destructor. You can turn it on and it gives you lots of useful information. So if I run this program of mine, if I can find it, where was it? There we go. I'm just going to run it. And this is what's happening. Take a look. So first setting the container, that's line number seven, and it says default of the container. Right? Then it says creating, setting the container to 25. That's, that's when this object is getting created. It's setting it and it says creating with 25 out of 100. Oh, sorry, creating a container with 25 out of 100 value. Then it copies that into C. After the copying is done, before line 9 begins, there is no need for that no name. It's going to kill it immediately. Container with 25 and 100 value is dying. That's the nameless container dying. Now the container is dead. Line number 8 happens, and that's what it is. OK? Yes? There is no detection. It's the rule of the language. When you create a destructor, whatever you put inside the destructor will be called right before the object dies. Is there a reason why you would um, like ass assign 25 to the constructor instead of doing it like initially when you're creating? Yeah, because I'm an idiot. That's why. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. If you see something like that, it's a bad thing to do. I just wasted lots of memory. An extra object was created for the stupid line that I've written over there. These are things, this is but it works moment. But it works. I know it works. But you just wasted lots of time. You got to be careful. OK? What you write. Compiler tries to make things right, which is sometimes very costly. If I do this, however, so I'm going to leave this over here. And I'm going to call it container main. And I'm going to call it temporary nameless object. So we know it's temp nameless object. So you know temp temporary nameless object is getting created in here. OK? Let's save that. Now, if I remove this thing and put the assignment right at the moment of creation, then that becomes a constructor. No default constructor is called in here, an object is just created for itself, and whoosh, three years later, the program is not running. Why? Oh, I changed the wrong thing. Uh, control. Save. I wrong, ran the wrong thing. This is right, right? Okay, let's bring it up. There you go. Now, if I run it, you will see that. Oh, I forgot to remove this. It's good. We have lots of stuff printed. Now I'm running it again. And voila, no extra thing is created. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? One? Yes. Uh, can you pass multiple values to the constructor through assignment? Thank you. That's, no, no, not through assignment. But that, so that's, uh, I'm gonna, that's the next thing I wanted to say. So if you want to create constructors that create things with detail, you are not stuck only with passing one argument. You can create constructors with, with many arguments. There is no problem with that. So what I can do over here now is first fixing my code over here because I have 100 over there hard-coded, which is wrong. I have to say max capacity, so that's fixed. And now let's actually create a constructor that accepts two values. So I can actually have over here container int value and int capacity. OK? So now I have a cons uh, constructor that accepts two arguments, 
Now I can come over here. So just because I'm lazy, I'm just going to copy this. Oh. Copy and paste. So now I'm going to have value and I'm going to have capacity, integer capacity. Now in here, of course, I'm going to pass the capacity to it and I'm going to say create a container with value this and that. So now I can not only create with one, but I can create another one, container B. There is no way that you can use assignment operator. There is no way that you can use assignment operator for two arguments because that's not how assignment operator works. Assignment operator has one value at right. You cannot do it. The signature doesn't match. So now in here I have to say, uh, say, say 25 out of 200, let's say. Okay. Now I can say b.display. <clears throat> and I have an error. Where is the error? Give me line number. Oh, stupid compiler. OK. <laughs> All right, so now I have two. And the first one is out of 100, and 25 is out of 200. The second one is out of 200. So I can create different types of container. And that's constructors and destructors, OK? Are we OK with this? <clears throat> now, temporary nameless objects. <clears throat> Uh, the class ends at when? 30. 30? Oh, I have 10 minutes, 11 minutes. Wow, that's nice. OK, so let's say, yes, sir. How to call a constructor with an array of objects? You can't. Okay. You can't. OK, how do we call, uh, like, array of objects? No. Just a second. Let me, let me show you something. Beautiful thing to put. Actually, fantastic question. Loved it. So let's put this one over here. Uh, I'm going to say uh, container main. That's just number three. Please follow and see what it is. <clears throat> now, please take a look. If I create, I changed the wrong one again. Don't save. What happens if I have it in an array? What happens if I say C3? <clears throat> First of all, if you have an array like that, so I'm going to have 4 int i set to 0, i less than 3, and i plus plus. And then I'm going to have uh, C the display <coughs> a space between. And then I'm going to say, oh, see, that's one of the bad things that they added to, 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 the, to the IDE that I hate. I have to see how to turn it off. I'll tell you why. Give me a second. When you have a pointer at left, it automatically changes the dot to an arrow. I hate that. That, that creates bug for my program instead of helping me type. I wanted to put over the CI. I forgot to put it, it changed it. I'm not going to get an error. It's just going to uh, display the first, time, first one over and over. So be careful. That's the stupid thing they did in here. And I do not like it. So if you have a pointer at left and you put dot, it automatically converts it to, to, a, to an arrow for some stupid reason. Don't. Be careful about it. OK? This is what I wanted to do. OK? So if, you, if, if I wouldn't notice now, it would have ran, and it would just print the first one over and over, because the name of the array points to the first element, right? And I would see why it doesn't change the other ones. OK, careful with that thing that they have done. I have to see how to turn it off. OK, now if I run it, because I created three arrays, they are all defaulted out of 0, 4 to 0, because nothing is provided. If I want to put values in them, I can initialize it to, get ready, 10, 20, and 30. 
Now, if I do something like this, what's going to happen? Because it knows that its initialization assignment at the moment of creation, C0 will be initialized to, to 10, C1 will be initialized to 20, C3 uh, will be initialized to 30. What if I want to have two arguments passed? If you want to do something like that, there is a trick that is like this. Create a temporary nameless object, which is container. Now in here, I'm going to say, uh, I don't know, 23 out of 500. So what happens, the first one's going to get initialized to 10. Second one is going to get initialized to 20. Third one is going to get initialized to a temporary nameless container. Okay? So, but there is something that C++ does. It says, if I am initializing, creating something to a temporary nameless, I'm not going to waste my time to create it again. I'm just going to assume the identity of that. If you don't understand it, just forget it. We'll talk about it later. Okay? So what happens is that now the third one is kind of set uh, with, uh, with that one, as you see. So it actually says creating container, creating container, and it creates the third one uh, to 25, uh, 23 out of uh, 500. So if I wanted to have initializing to all different things, you can simply create temporary nameless objects and put it in an array in front of it, and that'll work. Are we okay with this? Yes, sir. Create object with uh, dynamic memory when you uh, when the destructor call. Does that clear the? No, the, it doesn't no? do anything. Okay. Remember one more thing. And I want you to put your hearing ears. They say do like this so you can actually listen and keep, hear me properly. I want everybody to do this now. No, I'm kidding. So <laughs> now listen to me. Nothing is automatic in C++. Beautiful question. It says, if I have dynamic memory allocation and I create a destructor, will it deallocate the, the, the memory for me? No. You have to write the code in it. Then it will. You create the destructor, and then it will. And that's the next thing I want to do. I want to start an object over here with dynamic memory allocation. Uh, I have five minutes for it. That's too much time. All right. <laughs> So what I want to do is this. What I want to do is this. Come on, Fardat. Where did you put it? Don't pack your stuff. Wait for me. I just copied. Why is it not pasting? Yeah. All right. We know what constructors are. Oh, one more thing I wanted to say. Shoot, I'm not going to make it for the uh, dynamic memory al allocation example. One more thing, one more thing, one more thing. Listen to me, listen to me. Say I want to set a container and print it immediately. Say I want to do this. I want to have a container main. That's four. Array. Say I want to do something like this. Let's say I have container B, I don't know, set to 55. Then I say B.display. You know all that, how it works, OK? Now I want to do this. Take a look. I want to say <clears throat> B.set, OK, to say 40. OK, now I'm going to say b.display, right?
Correct? Right? Why could I, why I was capable of passing NL to display? Because I sent, because I sent the C out back, right? Now, there is a pointer that points to a very specific location. There is a pointer that points to the very specific location. That is the address of the current object that you're in. I can, for example, tell set of mine that's returning void. You see the set? OK? I can go to the definition over here <clears throat> and say, so the name of this function, this pointer that points to the current lo colon location of the object is called <clears throat> this. OK? T H I S, this. So what I can do, I can say return this. Well, wait a minute. This is a pointer to the current object. How can I get its reference? The ref no, not at the reference of. It is already a pointer. This is an address. How do I change up an address to a pointer? The target of, the asterisk, right? So I can say return me out and then say send the reference of me out. So I'm going to say container reference set. So what did I accomplish by doing this? What did I accomplish by doing this? Is that a question you want to answer? Yeah. No. That, I, I, it was a rhetorical question. I want to explain afterwards. So <laughs> what, 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 what I, what I want to do over here, what do I want to do? I want to do this. Now, this set of mine is returning what? Set of mine is returning a reference to the current object, correct? Who is the current object? What is the current object's name in here? B, right? So set returns the reference of B like display. It's going to assume its identity. Display is assuming the identity of C out, right? Because it's returning O stream. Set is returning the current on container, so it assumes its identity. Therefore, instead of writing display over there, I can actually do this. B dot set dot display. What happened? B is B. It calls set. Set sets it to 40, returns the reference of B out. Therefore, the whole thing over here, b.set40, will be a reference of b. Therefore, I can say dot display. OK? So this is very useful later on. Literally, this, the pointer, is really useful when it comes to this. OK? So this is very useful when it comes to this. <laughs> OK, so I, I'm going to do that to the other one, too. So just, uh, they're both the same. Copy. Oh. So that's container. Reference. And again, we're going to return this. Oh, what am I doing? Seriously, my brain is completely gone, lost. That's void. I need to bring my computer, man. This is not working. OK, so where is that? This is the one. And container. And return this. And it's 32. OK, so the next day you are coming in, <clears throat> we might have a mini lecture, which means half of the class will be a lecture okay, in your lab. Okay? So I'm going to make the in-lab longer. So make sure I'm going to start doing the in-lab like crazy today. Do the in-lab before you come to the lab.
so you can finish it in the lab, okay? Take a look at the in-lab. It's going to come out through during the weekend, okay? So do the in-lab before you come to the lab. 